Narcissists are highly entitled people. We know that their entitlement plus their lack of empathy gives birth to exploitation. In this video, I'm going to share with you how a narcissist exploits your strengths and what you can do to protect yourself so you don't get exploited again. First, for those of you who are new to my channel, I'm Shanine Megji. I am a transition coach. Welcome to my YouTube series on toxicity is not your destiny. My mission is to help people navigate toxic relationships and environments in their lives from a biblical, practical, and spiritual perspective. So if you like this video, take a moment, click that subscribe button, click that bell, because every week I'm going to be bringing you a new video to empower you in navigating toxic relationships and environments in your life. So now let's get into the subject. In my last two videos, I talk about how a narcissist can exploit you with their generosity and how they can exploit your wounds. So if you haven't watched those videos, I would highly recommend that you watch them alongside with this one. Today I'm going to talk to you about how narcissists exploit your strengths in three ways. Now the first way is through your virtues. So for example, if you are an empathetic, compassionate, loyal, and forgiving person, the narcissist will use that to their advantage. They will commend you for being so empathetic and kind and loyal and forgiving, while they, on the other hand, never or rarely display those virtues back to you. If you are a loyal person, they will exploit that by making you feel like the most loyal, faithful person in the whole world for staying with them, while they show no loyalty to you whatsoever. If you are a persevering person, they will exploit that by making you feel like this good soldier for sticking it out with them while they continue to be difficult. If you are a thick-skinned person who chooses not to get offended easily, they will exploit that by making you feel like such a gracious and forgiving person while they continue to do these cruel, hurtful, offensive things. If you are a humble person, they will exploit that by treating you as inferior, as less than them, while they elevate themselves and other people around them that they want to love bomb and impress, and also to triangulate against you. If you're a good listener, they will be the ones often talking. It will be a one-way conversation, and you will be commended for being an amazing, empathetic listener. Meanwhile, they never ask questions about you. They don't show any interest or curiosity about what's going on in your world. The truth is, they're not curious. They don't care. They deflect off their extremely selfish, one-sided approach by calling you a great listener, Meanwhile, they monopolize all the airspace in almost every conversation. If you are a compassionate and empathetic person, they will use your compassion and empathy for them to see them as a victim and to be angry and believe the lies about the people that they oppress and treat badly. They will treat you like a confidant, the one they feel comfortable opening up to and sharing their inner world and struggles with in order to exploit your compassion and your empathy. So why do narcissists do this? It is a form of deflection. It takes the focus off their destructive and massive deficits by promoting your admirable traits. They succeed in getting you to feel good about your virtues, which turns the focus off of them onto you. They also succeed in manipulating you by using their praise and flattery as a positive reinforcement to train you into exemplifying more of those empathic, humble, and forgiving traits. This is so that they can keep you in a state of being proud of your virtues and remaining self-absorbed in developing them and practicing them more and more, while the narcissist remains undetective and unaccountable for their destructive behaviors. There are many Christian leaders who run their churches and ministries this way, and we are seeing more and more of them coming off of their pedestals and sadly showing up in news headlines. The second way that a narcissist exploits your strengths is through your growth mindset and resourcefulness. Narcissists are highly entitled people. 
they think that they are superior to everyone else. So they will only associate themselves with people who are strong, who have something to offer them, who have some level of success in their lives. And generally, those people are more growth-minded, self-aware, and introspective than the norm because it is those traits that have enabled them to succeed in life. So if you are into growth, self-development, introspection, self-reflection, being self-aware, the narcissist will exploit that because they do not self-reflect and they are not self-aware and they have zero interest in going deep into themselves to find out what motivates them to do the things they do. They're all about deflecting and blame shifting. So the way they do this discreetly is by getting you to believe that you are the one who needs to grow, who needs to work on yourself to uncover your blind spots. In other words, it is you that is the problem in the relationship and you need to change. And because you are so used to being resourceful and problem solving, and you don't naturally have a victim mindset, you will take on the challenge and do everything in your power to fix yourself in order to improve the relationship with the narcissist. If you are an introspective and reflective person, you will reflect more and pray and see what are the bad traits in you that are contributing to the problems. And you would seek to change those. Or if you're into healing and growth, you might take a course or go for some inner healing or see a counselor. So at the end of the day, you will become more self-approved and more self-aware, more empowered, but the problems will still continue in the relationship because the problem was never you. And that is the frustrating part. You are so used to taking action to solve the problems. And in some way, it feels more empowering for you on an unconscious level to believe that you are the problem because then it means you have some control. Then there's hope. Then there's a possibility that things can work out in the end and you don't have to face a more painful alternative, which could be separating or walking away from that relationship. This might feel like a daunting, unbearable thought depending on how much you've invested in that relationship and how dependent you are on the person. But the reality is that when you are the one forever working on yourself, it only results in you getting stronger, more healed, more self-aware in the relationship, and maybe, hopefully, you seeing the destructive habits for what they are. But if leaving or ending the relationship is too much of an unbearable thought, it could cause you to, to deny what is really happening and deceive yourself into believing all kinds of other explanations for why things are the way they are. Nonetheless, no matter what you believe, at the end of the day, nothing changes with the narcissist. In fact, things are likely to get worse because your personal growth and newfound strength now triggers envy in the narcissist. So they will criticize you, they will tear you down, because they can't stand that you are a stronger person. It's a threat to them. So it's a catch-22. You can't win in this situation. So I'm telling you, it doesn't matter how much you work on yourself. It never improves the relationship with the narcissist because the fundamental issue in the relationship is with the narcissist, not with you. If you are a female with a male narcissist, Ludie Bancroft has written an excellent book called Why Does He Do That? Inside the Minds of Angry and Controlling Men. One of the things he said, which I found so powerful, was this. Part of how the abuser escapes confronting himself is by convincing you that you are the cause of his behavior or that you at least share in the blame. But abuse is not a product of bad relationship dynamics and you cannot make things better by changing your own behavior or attempting to manage your partner better. Abuse is a problem that lies entirely with the abuser. Here is a picture of how the exploitation works. If you are naturally optimistic and can easily see the good in people and situations, you are just someone who knows how to turn those lemons into lemonade that has always been your mindset. Well, the narcissist will exploit that by dumping wheelbarrows upon wheelbarrows of lemons of their own negativity into your life and expect you to make the lemonade for them, which they can indulge into their heart's content but never share any with you, 
Instead, they leave you dehydrated and depleted. And then they reject you because they can't stand your dehydrated and depleted state around them, which they caused. Narcissists exploit you by putting you in a locked cage or prison, but will gaslight you into making you believe you have an attitude problem for not being happy with where you're at. You are the one who is not grateful for the space you're in, and you need to use your growth mindset and resourcefulness to make the situation you're in work and to be something good and positive. And that is how they gaslight you and keep you in denial about what is really happening. And this leads me into the third way that a narcissist exploits your strength. It is through feeding your ego during the love bombing stage. It is during this stage that they idolize you, that they make you feel so special. And on top of that, they will triangulate you against others. They will make themselves to be the victim and other people are doing bad things to them. And now they're confiding in you like the only person that they can trust. So what happens is that you start to have so much love and empathy for the narcissist that you begin to judge the people that they hate or dislike. And the moment we start to take on the narcissist cause, we become more like them. We become a narcissist. Many people lose themselves in the love and the intoxication of the love and the attention. And then they start to embody the traits of the narcissist. They can become their extension without even knowing it and start to betray people. And the sad reality is that the victims of narcissistic abuse end up on a swinging pendulum where they are both a victim of the narcissist and a partner in the abuse. And a lot of us don't like to face that in ourselves when we go through it, but it is often the reality. And when the narcissist love bombs you and lifts you up as that prize in their life, your traits of being loyal, empathetic, and all that succeed in turning you into an extension of the narcissist or what many people call the flying monkey. And this is how a narcissist can isolate you from all the people that you once had a relationship with. They can triangulate you against most others. And it's a very insidious form of manipulation that can cause the deepest divides between people because betrayal can run so, so deep. An expert narcissist can destroy close friendships, marriages, and families with their diabolical power to triangulate. And they use their exploitation to triangulate you with the most important people in your life. So how can we safeguard ourselves from the exploitation? It's really important to come to a place of learning how to trust your own perception, your own judgment, trusting that you have ears to hear what God is saying and to learn and to not believe the lie that the person that sounds the most confident or can present the best argument is actually right. Their reality is right because that is false. And that is how a narcissist can exploit and have their control over people. A lot of times, especially with people that are more self-reflective, that are more into growth and uh, self-awareness and they're naturally more humble, they defer easily, especially to people that would sound very confident. And a narcissist hinges on that. They can sound the most confident and present the best arguments. And therefore it is so easy to defer whatever we're feeling or sensing to what the narcissist is saying. And over time, as we do that over and over and over, it creates instability in ourselves and it creates a sense of imbalance and not being able to trust anymore how we think or who we are. And we, it makes us dependent actually on the narcissist to tell us what's right and what's real. And that's how they sustain control. So the way to safeguard is to learn to trust our own perceptions. So know that whatever you pick up, there's validity to it. And if you feel there's something off, well, you need to trust that and you need to go with that and you need to probe that more instead of just writing it off and writing yourself off. And that is the way to start getting free and to be empowered and also to not get into those relationships because anybody that is not willing to have a dialogue with you and is not willing to consider your perspective, well, that's a recipe for a relationship where you will be gaslighted over and over again. Another thing that is so important is to have your identity deeply rooted in Christ. If your identity is strong in Christ and you have a vibrant relationship with him, it will be much harder for the narcissist to make you into an extension of them. 
The reason is because your heart is fixed more on becoming like Jesus Christ and not like the narcissist. So you will be able to detect more when something is coming from the narcissist's flesh and not coming from God. When you know God, you will also be able to hear him speaking to you and you will be able to inquire of him and receive warning signs from him. In the Bible, God was always so faithful to give warning signs when his people were in danger. He caused the wise men who are going to see Jesus to take a different route back from King Herod because he was dangerous. He caused Joseph, Mary, and Jesus to escape to G Egypt while their lives were in danger. If you have a close relationship with God, you will be better positioned to hear him when he wants to warn you about a threat in a relationship. I have actually created a video on how God uses toxic relationships for good. I would encourage you to watch it with this one because there are insights in there on what you can do to safeguard yourself from further abuse. So here are some other tips you can do to safeguard yourself. Be aware of people that praise you too much or flatter you. It is always a trap from the devil. When a narcissist is flattering you and making you feel like a million bucks, don't allow yourself to get intoxicated by that. They could be grooming you to become their extension. They could be jealous of the other relationships in your life and are using the love bombing to separate you. Be aware of someone who is constantly talking negatively about other people, especially people that they are no longer in relationship with or someone who has a history of broken relationships where they don't take responsibility for any of the failures in the relationship. That is definitely a red flag. Another way that you can safeguard yourself is practicing not thinking of yourself more highly than you ought to. Have a humble and sober attitude of yourself. A narcissist exploits by feeding your pride and making you feel good about all your strengths in order to deflect from their deficits. And that is one of the ways the devil takes us out, by inflating our pride and our egos. That is why praise tests a man's heart more than the furnace. It is so much easier to be blinded by that kind of exploitation because it is connected to feeding our pride, which we often do not detect. Another thing you can do to safeguard yourself from exploitation has to do with vision. And this is about enlarging your perception so you can be more alert. It's about being able to see clearly the forest from the trees. So what narcissists do is that they get you to focus on the one tree, which is you, but they blind you to the existence of the forest, which is really the dynamics with them and possibly others in the whole system. So go more high level with how you look at things. Take a bird's eye perspective. Look at your history, look at patterns and trends. That's what I mean by looking at the forest. When a narcissist focuses on your strengths, it is their way of using your pride to turn your eyes on yourself and to be blind to the rest of the forest. And as I mentioned earlier, it's also essential that you be tuned into yourself when you're with the narcissist. Pay attention to how your body feels and what you're feeling in your gut. Trust your intuition. It usually picks up on things before our conscious minds are even aware. If something feels deeply wrong about the interactions, chances are it's because there is something wrong. And even if you can't explain it all, just trust yourself. Trust your perceptions, your discernment, and your judgment. If something feels wrong, just don't go with it. Another thing you can do when something feels wrong about the relationship is this exercise. Separate the narcissist's words from their actions and only read their actions. Their actions are where the truth lies. Narcissists are pathological liars. You can't trust anything they say. Just look at their actions and make the assessment. So I hope these insights were helpful. If you know someone who is in an abusive relationship and trying to navigate, share this video with them so that they can get the insights in this video on exploitation and what they can do to safeguard against it. If you have left a toxic or abusive environment and you're in a season of transition, I have a gift for you. It is a training on three key ways to navigate the difficult transition. These are keys that brought a massive breakthrough in my life when I was going through a difficult transition. I have included the link in the description below.
So this brings me to the end of my video. If you would like to see more content from me and you have not subscribed yet, go ahead, click the subscribe button and click the little bell so that you will get all the alerts because every week I will be posting a new video to empower you to navigate toxic relationships in your life. And if you liked this video, please give it a like. This channel is still new, so your likes just help me to know what kind of content you like and ideas of what further content I should produce. And if you have other suggestions of topics you would like me to cover, please feel free to drop those ideas in the comment section. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you for watching. Until the next time.